We're about to dive into our wildest character creation session to date. But before we get there and hear the amazing people we made with the Neoscum crew, we have some announcements. First up, the less important announcement. We are still accepting last minute questions for our Q&A episode. If you have some burning questions you want to ask us, now's your chance. So you can check out the link in our show notes uh, to our Google form. You can ask us about our opinions on character creation, about characters we've made, about role playing games, player advice, mm -hmm. or just about us personally. But again, that link is in our show notes. So hurry up and get them in because we're going to be recording that soon. Very, very soon after the release of this episode. And now for uh, a, an actually very important announcement. Um, our friend Jeff from the System Mastery Podcast is currently going through a very rough medical ordeal. Uh, a few months ago, Jeff was forced to make the choice between insuring himself and insuring his newborn daughter. And of course, he chose his daughter, as anyone who is a parent would attest to. Uh, unfortunately, Jeff currently finds himself in the hospital with multiple medical issues after going in just for pneumonia. Uh, needless to say, the bills are going to be pretty high because of this. So there is currently a GoFundMe page that has been set up for this. Uh, and to help get you there easier, you can head to helpjeff.charactercreationcast.com and it'll take you right to the GoFundMe page. Uh, if you are able to, check out the fundraiser and give whatever you feel comfortable doing so. Uh, if not, then just please pass the word on to others on uh, any social media platform. Uh, Jeff's a really great guy and uh, he really deserves the best. So, Yeah, Jeff is awesome. You've heard him on our show. Um, this is really a bummer. And we were having a discussion about health insurance like right before this and yeah, complaining about... Yeah, it was like the day about... or two before. My God, capitalism sucks. And um, this is just another example of it. So, mm -hmm. yeah, if you guys can help Jeff out at all, that would be awesome. And again, even just sharing it with other people is so helpful. Um, it's helpjeff with one F dot character creation cast dot com. And we'll put a link to it in our show notes as well. I did put in alternate spellings of Jeff. Uh, if you were so inclined to spell it with two F's, it'll take you to the same place. Or the British Jeff, uh, G-E-O-F-F. -F. Wow, that, you that thought this That will also through. take you there. <laughs> you never know. Wow, I'm really proud of you. So, yeah, help Jeff. <laughs> help Jeff. Help Jeff. In lieu of, other, in lieu of this news... We are going to forego a review. We just ask that you help Jeff out in any way you can sharing this. Um, it's so appreciated to all of us at the One Shot Network. For now, um, we have a show for you today. So let's get back to our Shadowrun character creation cast with Neoscum. Enjoy. Last episode, we started creating our characters in Shadowrun with the folks at Neoscum. Due to the complexity of the system, we paired up and started three characters. Mike and Blair started creating a person who was cloned using the blood of Jesus. Eleni and Casey were creating a teacup piglet pixie, while Amelia and I were starting to create a more traditional elf decker. We'll be picking up right where we left off last time. Enjoy. All right, so where were we again? Um, we had decided we were going to make a character together. So I think we have to pick some, what, attributes or... Yeah, so uh, are you good then, Amelia, with the, the priority uh, choices that I had made? I think that's fine. Okay, cool. That'll work. Collaborative. I uh, just want to give you guys an update on our character, Saint, the Jesus figure. Uh, yes. So we found a negative quality called pacifist, um, and we took that. And uh, you can take pacifist as either uh, 
uh, like severity one, which is avoids violence, or severity two, which is will not commit any violence. So uh, our character will not commit oh, wow. any well, <laughs> violence. Look, but you, our character can commit violence, but he takes huge penalties if he does. Yeah, uh, in, including like losing points of willpower or charisma. Uh, wow! For, like, wow! A period of time. Is, is that a permanent thing so, or? Uh... The, no, the loss is permanent. Wow. <laughs> oh, I love that you have made this completely unplayable character. <laughs> Hold on. We also we also so, gave ourselves uh, martial arts ability brawling <laughs> with one special martial arts technique, which is haymaker. Which let's see. <laughs> <laughs> so Jesus is not going to fight, but wait, wait, wait! He, oh, he can't fight. It's not he can't kill. It's he can't fight. No, actually, it does actually have a specific thing for if he kills somebody. If he kills someone, that's like the worst. Uh, <laughs> If the character actually kills someone or even thinks they did, the dice pool modifier becomes negative two. Oh my god, yeah. So essentially what happens is they take a minus one dice pool modifier and then over the course of the next day, they have to make a test. And if they fail the test, they lose willpower or charisma forever. Oh my god. The loss wow. is permanent, but the minus one dice pool modifier to test include that goes. Uh, He's like a cleric. He's like, you need a, a team that to support. He, he just wants to resolve everything peacefully. And if not, he'll throw one haymaker in I there. think <laughs> these traits are the most interesting thing. <laughs> they, uh, oh, yeah. He he also has loss of confidence in leadership, um, mm. which sort of like I, – well, I'm getting all of my knowledge here from Jesus Christ Superstar. <laughs> 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 I know he, he went through a lot and, and oh, didn't God. know if he was you know making the sacrifice uh, uh, in vain or, or whatever, but he takes – penalties to his his leadership stat which is pretty high which is a uh, a skill that he has he's like an innate leader he has a calm his his magic uh his like adept abilities all sort of line up with uh jesus can you can you go to uh to magic i love this character so much uh -huh. i mean totally useless in a real game but so good I, well the thing is that i feel like we could truthfully like play this character and I think our GM would totally throw us into things where this character had interesting choices to make. And um, I think he would also lose points in charisma and willpower over time. Uh, yeah, because he would, he would have to kill. But this character... What a great narrative device, you know? Look at your character really changing. And we can do things that aren't related to combat that are cool. Like we have... Uh, Power swimming. We have power swimming, which is the closest I can get to water walking. <laughs> uh, we, would probably, we would probably talk to our GM and try to see if we can bargain power yeah. swimming into water walking. Jesus has, a good GM, they has three in animal empathy uh, because he's a shepherd of the people. Mm. Uh, oh, wow. Yes, I love it. He has cool resolve, which is sort of like at odds with his like the doubt that he feels with his leadership. We're also going to give him like a mentor spirit. Um, he can feign death. He has. Yes. Uh, I love it. Um, I love it. And sustenance, which I was trying Although, to. I don't know if I feel like some people might be mad that you're insinuating that Jesus faked his death. Uh, look, <laughs> I'm working within the system to find the closest <laughs> thing. Right. It's it's open to interpretation. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. And then I found one that was sustenance, which just implies that uh, this character doesn't really have to eat as much. Um, which, because he can turn water into wine. That was the reasoning. That was the reasoning. But also, I'm like. You know what? He's kind of like a demigod type guy. Let him let him not have to eat hamburgers as much or whatever. Yeah. I mean, he's got those loaves and fishes. Yeah. I feel like he could like hang out and be your chef or something, you know? Yeah. Or like a driver if I gave him any driving skills, which I didn't. Uh, which we will, though. We got some whispering happening on the other side of the table, and I, I'm dying to know what's going on over there with the... Uh, a Lenny and Casey's character. So yeah, tell us about this teacup pig. So so we've been like uh, we've been doing a lot of like qualities and stuff for this pig. Like um, also, got, it's so funny. Uh, I, I'm glad that you guys are making a more traditional character because I think we're all just like at this point we're like let's make the most non traditional character. I love it though. Like, I like that we can show off all the all the weird stuff that you can. Yeah. So yeah. I just oh never mind. Oh, this needs a, a mind palace. <laughs> yeah, but that's not. I didn't mean to click on that. What did oh, I just okay. do? Um, um, so we've created this little teacup pig, um, Pixie, who, go ahead, Casey, you say you well, say part of it, and then I'll say the part that I added that I didn't tell you about. Oh, ooh, exciting. So so I, I think the big thing, like, I just had this idea that, like, there'd be a teacup pig that is just, like, with a party, but it's not, like, an NPC. It's, like, a player character. And, it like, it has skills and it has attributes, but it, like, can't 
it can't really like accomplish anything. Like it's really, it's really smart. It can speak multiple, it can understand multiple languages, but it can't speak. Uh, <laughs> it, it like it has four points and pistols, uh, just because it like grew up with so many. But it has, but it has like a this. strength of one, so like, can it, it really lift? The no, pistol? it couldn't because it also has hooves. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it also doesn't. It has hooves. It look, guys. Let's be real. It's a teacup piglet. Okay, let's be real. This is what we're making in Shadow. But we did give it a charisma of nine. So everybody who very sees charismatic this pig, pig. everyone taken. loves it. And oh yeah, for sure. It's adorable. We've also added so when you just to go through the the basic stats here. Yeah. We've got body <laughs> 1, agility 4 cuz it's kind of middle of the road. Reaction 3, not too good. Strength 1, very bad. Willpower 7. Like this will this little pig can survive. It's got willpower. Imagine a teacup piglet alone out there in this horrifying future. <laughs> it's doing you gotta okay. Be, you got to have a will of You really iron. do. Logic, six. It's a smart teacup pig. <laughs> I mean, it speaks multiple languages. Intuition, six. Well, it Again, understands. It's smart. It it knows what's going on. And charisma, nine. Very charming. But here's the here's where things get really fun. So like, um, so I was like, right, I, I, I picked some like uh, negative qualities, which are, as we said, always fun for like, like n narrative aspects. Um, uh, <laughs> so some of our negative qualities, I want to go through these before we go through the positives real quick. Uh, number one is, of course, distinctive style. It, <laughs> it's, it's little teacup pig. It's so a, it's a teacup. When, it, when that walks in with a little gun strapped to his back, um, and You'll then, know. Is that the extent of the distinctive quality, or does it like have a flashy outfit? No, it's I just the fact it, that it's like it, a, yeah. a, a uh, tiny just being a pig. Yeah, yeah. tiny little pig I th is because I think if your character was like with wings, feet, if your character was like eight feet tall, you would be like that would be like distinctive style in a way as well. Like, so That's I could fair. like, um, I mean, you could choose not to, but how could you not play it like noticeable, you know? So at that point you might as well can, take the negative quality. Can this pig have a tiny hat though? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It's a, it's, pig, I just feel like that's really important definitely. to me. It's your character. You can do what you want, but I would like this pig to have totally. a tiny hat. Yeah. Definitely. And it's a, it's a little like a, a little, I imagine like a tiny top hat. I'm imagining like a birthday hat, like a cone hat. That's like a birthday oh, hat. Yeah, that's, sorry, I, that's, love that's, that's <laughs> I love it. I love it so cute. much. <laughs> okay. Uh, okay. Oh. okay. Well, d hold on. And then uh, here are here are where things get real interesting. Uh, but th this little pig that's just beloved by everybody it sees has a couple other negative qualities. One is gremlins, which Mike mentioned earlier, uh, which is just technology sometimes fails around a, a character. Uh, apart from that, whenever they try to do anything with technology, uh, they're, they're taking like stuff off the dice pool. And, yeah, they're probably going to mess uh, it up somehow. Uh, oh, I think it's w w the thing is uh you um for for critical fail critical glitches which are like crit fails uh which we haven't even gotten into it basically makes those notably easier when interacting with technology um and then uh so the, the what i wrote down here was technology sometimes fails around teacup oh teacup uh, and then another one was the goat which is basically like when something goes wrong even if you didn't do it uh, people as assume it was you just be oh, because of like up. your yeah. So that's oh, another like scapegoat. Uh, yeah, yes. yeah, yeah. So that so that like uh, teacup is always making things kind of go screwy, and they go oh teacup. And even when it's not teacup's fault, they go oh teacup. And when they see teacup, uh, she's very distinctive, and so they say oh teacup. There she is walking around. I'm saying she had it, and you know yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out. Teacup, teacup. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah, how's how's the elf hack hacker going? I, I don't know what to do with attributes. I mean, obviously, logic, we probably want as high as we can go. Yeah. Reaction and in intuition is a safe bet. Yeah, I, I'd say pretty much no matter what you're doing, you're probably going to want those two stats. You don't need to have them maxed, but if you're yeah. looking for places to put stuff, um, I mean, and if one that's is low, what, you want uh, the other one. My instinct told me is put everything into logic that you can, so six out of six. You can only have one attribute that's maxed for your meta type. So the rest we could do four and four for reaction and intuition if we wanted to max those out. I think so. Um, that'll leave us with one extra point to use um, pretty much wherever we want. 
Yeah, and I think for that, mm-hmm. it just kind of depends on, you know, uh, what type of combat maybe that your decker is going to be getting into. Like, do you see them having, like, a gun or uh, or do they avoid combat? Do they use melee weapons? Like, what kind of... Would would uh, agility be gun-based? Yeah, agility yeah. would affect your, your ability to, like, fire a pistol, yeah. I think, like, 20. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And you never know because if something happened where you suddenly had to jump... I don't know, from one roof to the other roof. <laughs> yeah, if you had to pull a Tom Cruise in uh, Mission Impossible 3, is that, you is never that the know. one where he sprained his ankle? Oh, that was the most recent one, which was uh, 6. 6? They're on 6? Yeah. yeah, Mission Impossible 3 was great. <laughs> I loved that. 4 was great. 5 was great. I never saw six. 4. Mission, was super great. Mission Impossible is like so close to just becoming a Final Fantasy franchise. But it gets be- It truly it gets better every time, uh, somehow. Anyway. I think agility. I think so too. I like that because uh, it will be okay enough with the gun or something like that. Okay enough. That's all I need. Yeah. yeah. Well, and you also yeah. have a ton of skills, so you can pretty much max out whatever gun you're looking to get. And honestly, yeah. you'll you'll have enough skills that you can p- probably pick three different types of guns that you want to be really good with. Um, nice. Because uh, and so that's sort of like the benefit there. Your attribute might be kind of low, but since you have so many skills, you can kind of like put it where to go. That makes sense. I like that. And plus, we started out with two agility uh, out of seven, so we were able to increase that plus one to three agility starting out. Yeah. Cool. So that means we've got uh, three agility, five reaction, six logic, five intuition, three charisma, and one in the rest. That's still pretty – that's pretty decent. I feel yeah, like that's not gonna, bad. You're going to be having very good base rolls on stuff once you add your – 46 skill points, right? Did you guys still have 46 <laughs> skill points? Yeah. Well, you have oh, and 10, 10, 10 group points, is that right? Yeah, 10 group yeah. points, 46 skill points. So you'll have a total of 76 oh, like, skill points. bones in the, the big, big brain. brain. That's what I, I think. <laughs> 20, 76 shadow runs. <laughs> I think that's what uh, Dak Rambo, I think he prioritized skill points. Oh, yeah. okay. Which is why he has stuff all over the place. Yeah, he's like a journeyman. That makes sense. Uh, yeah. The, what's the, the, what's the maximum that you can pump into one skill? Six. Uh, unless Six. you take a positive quality, which is aptitude, which allows you to put more skill points in given Where, skill. Okay. You're like professional sports player at whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You're not that. Uh, yeah. We have a quick update. Yo. So. So this yes. is pretty. This is pretty great. We uh, our our character is saying we as like a a mystical adept. We were granted a summon, and what more fitting summon to uh, have than the Holy Spirit. So wow. in Hero Lab, this let us launch a new character creator yeah, so, for well, our spirit guide. Oh, no way. Yeah. Really? Yeah. Um, and let me just walk you through. Uh, so this Holy Spirit has insane attributes. Truly insane. Divine. Yeah. Divine attributes. Nine body, five agility, eight reaction, oh my seven goodness. strength. Oh, my so the Holy Spirit does... Yeah. Get ready. Oh, get ready for this. Get ready. So uh, our Holy Spirit also has an AK-97. <laughs> I literally, I had liqueur in my mouth. I li- it was everything not to spit it all over the soundboard. We, I we, swear. We added uh, the skill automatics and long arms uh, to our Holy Spirit, so which gives it really long arms. They yeah. are they are very <laughs> yes, proficient absolutely. in handling their assault rifle. Um, we also gave them enhanced sense smell, just because. And then I went ahead and I gave them their own vehicle, which is. Uh, a taxi. I gave a, them a taxi. A cap. Cocoa taxi. Cocoa taxi, which is the shadow run equivalent of just a taxi. Wait, is it? I thought a cocoa taxi was like the little one seated co- like taxi things. Let's look it up because we got Hero Lab. Uh, let's go to the cocoa taxi, which I wanted to, n- to name the Holy Ghost Mobile. <laughs> <laughs> wow. <laughs> let's see. What does it say about the cocoa taxi? Oh, Wait, you know I think what? we have to go back to the Holy Spirit. I think- so you're able to summon this spirit. Is this spirit like? Uh, an entity that is amongst the normal people of the world, or? I think yes, and also part of the astral plane, which is sort of like a magic version of the Matrix in Shadowrun. Interesting. Uh, It's kind of like an ethereal world that's like layered on top of the real world. Just the best uh, discotheques. Uh, So a Coco Taxi is a three-wheeled taxi. 
Um, it's essentially a converted moped with a bench seat for passengers mounted between two rear wheels behind the driver. I would say that there's <laughs> space for the Holy Spirit. There's space for a pixie. And there's space for your character too, if you want to go. Well, you know, and you know how they say like, there's that whole thing at like like school dances, like Catholic school dances, like leave room for Jesus. It's like, well, dude, like Jesus got to leave room for for somebody else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, we're leave room for Jesus uh, to leave get on the cocoa. Yeah, dancing. come on, guys, you guys are riding it. off without. Wow, me. I can't believe uh, how actually like accurate you're able to make Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> I love yeah, the, we even got the cocoa tax. Yeah, it's the one that they like, talk about in the Bible. Yeah, just it, like in the Bible. Got it. In the Old Testament, there was like a four door sedan, but they were like, they're updating it to a cocoa taxi. Uh-huh. I mean, this is the far future. Yeah. So. This yeah. is the very that New Testament. Sense. Ooh, that's the name of our campaign the new New Testament. Oh, uh, yeah. yeah. The new oh, new no. Yes. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> So that's a theme that's, song that's for right. non listeners. So, you guys have your attributes. I got to hear about your secret additions. Oh, so we talked about some of these negative qualities that we spent karma on. Um, but the positive qualities, which are also, it says positive, it doesn't necessarily mean beneficial. Um, so, one of the positive qualities we have is disgraced, which means that this character used to be a figure of authority which was feared in the streets and publicly lauded as a hero until his reputation got tarnished. Um, I think we, in, in a certain way, I think we would we would twist the plane on that. But it does say that people will treat this character with disdain. So, so I think that yeah. sort of goes along with the lines of what you were saying earlier, where like this character is the goat, like the scapegoat, and everyone's like, oh, teacup. So they just don't like being around <laughs> Um, but only the only the people who like loved no. it before. But its current crew, it's like anybody new. So that plays into that the no, RPG no element. Friends. It, well, that this teacup is probably traumatized by that. Yeah, because it's, it's a like very sensitive little. It's teacup. like yeah, every time I make new friends, eventually they come to hate me. You know, because they just they don't like being around me. We have animal empathy. Yeah, so. we also have we animal also, empathy because we're like, hey, man, if anybody has animal empathy other than us. Jesus, we're a little it's, uh, it's another I, animal. I thought of one and more way. Oh, sorry. We've also got um, an exceptional attribute, which is charisma. So we can be extra charismatic to try to make up for the fact that people because they go like, oh, I'm I'm just d- this disgrace thing. But, oh, teacup, we we can't stay mad at you. You know, there's a little bit of both <laughs> in that play. I was, I was going to say, I thought of a way, because I we were joking about how the character that uh, Blair and I created is not super playable as a pacifist uh, who has debilitating penalties for doing violence. What if, as sort of like a religious figure, we are on like a campaign to like destroy zombies or something, something that's not alive. Oh, Can we get around yeah. the loophole if we're like purging the undead. As and, GM, yes. And I'm if say not, yes right now. if you say no to that, then is it okay if the Holy Spirit just kills everything with its AK-97? I said yes, but also yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, our player GM Casey. Yeah, you know what? Uh, today I'm the GM. Gannon's not here. Everybody, you know what? Everybody uh, re- refill an edge, reward yourself 20 karma for just thank you to hanging in there. <laughs> It's tough out That's there, amazing. guys. It's 2019. It's so or... cold. Take some more new yen before you go. Take a handful. <laughs> I'm still on skill groups You're right now. Still on skill groups. Are you? Yeah. Uh, are you? So I would say in the sauce. Yeah. All right. So my question: the the only ones that I'm not a hundred percent sure on in terms of what it means in Shadowrun is the tasking skill group, which includes compiling, decompiling, and registering. Ooh, uh, wait, what do you say? The te- tasking? Tasking. That's a, res- that's a technomancer skill, I think. Yeah, so uh, that that doesn't really apply to you because you'll be a decker. Um, okay. Yeah. That makes sense. Because it sounded computery. Yeah. But I, I, I know that Shadowrun has a lot of different stuff in it. Yeah. So. So, so that's controlling sprites, which are like Technomancer summons that uh, take place in the Matrix. Compiling, oh, okay. decompiling, okay. and registering are all things that like computers do, which as a Technomancer, you're kind of part computer. Yeah. Oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Okay, cool. Um. Yeah. So I was looking at through these, uh, Amelia, 
and mm -hmm. cracking and electronics kind of stood out to me uh for our for the skill groups for this character yeah um, i think so because th those will give us the best bane for our buck i guess you could say mm -hmm. yeah um you'll probably want both of those like pretty close to maxed out with how many skill points you guys have yeah because we could go what uh five and five for those yeah what do you think five and five with which ones uh the cracking skill group which would give us cyber combat electronic warfare and hacking and then the electronics uh skill group which would give us computer hardware and software I, i'm looking through all of the other skill groups and i'm not really seeing that sounds good to me much of anything that would help us in the matrix type world well you you might want to get like some sort of proficiency in a weapon just yeah. so that you can maybe use a similar type weapon in astral or in a matrix space. I'm thinking that we could just use regular skills points for those, right? Yeah. So for your skill groups, you'll probably want to use them, like you were saying, for stuff that's like sort of relevant to like the main core function of your character. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, unless you want to spend a few less uh, skill group points on those and then put some in somewhere else. What do you think, Amelia? I think that I like the groups better, personally. Right. Because we get we get 10 group points um, and 46 mm -hmm. um, individual points. So you're asking me which ones I want to do individually? Well, what which ones? Wh <laughs> wh where do we where do we want to spend our 10 group points? And then where do we want to spend our 46 individual points is basically the question. Oh, my God. That's so many points. Jeez, wow, this is six points. No, that, that. <laughs> I, I regretted the decision once. Uh, once I figured out that skills were not. I'm gonna. I'm gonna put it to you this way: We had 22 points, and we spent them on instruction, which makes us a good teacher. I don't know what we're teaching, but, <laughs> but yeah. we're a good teacher. We also yeah. did it for survival, which is a skill group. Wait, is it a group? Outdoors is oh, we we group. get zero groups with uh, our the way we prioritize it. So. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, Whereas pistols, you guys have a ton. <laughs> we got pistols and we got performance. I maxed out performance. Imagine this little doing dressage. This little teacup piglet doing like you know little like lifts one leg and then the other and does a little switch thing like a yeah, just like a dancing horse. Yeah, except so, a, a beautiful, cute little cute pig with a, a tiny little hat. Birthday. Uh, I just want to make a suggestion. If you if you guys are Struggling to think about things that you want. I just want to say one personal fun one that I like to look at, especially in Hero Lab, which shows you everything, is if you click exotic ranged weapon and then scroll down, you can have a proficiency in a grapple gun. You could have proficiency in a microwave gun. Uh, hold fast adhesive spray. There's just like oh, wow. so many specific like weird exotic weapons that immediately say so much about your character where it's like, whoa, you're the... You're the uh, hacker that is really good at uh, pepper punch pen or quills. <laughs> <laughs> or and also that is that's also if you make up your own weapon, you'd like put it mm -hmm. into an exotic like ranged or melee weapon. So you can get real, just get real crazy there, you know. You can get really good at a I throwing. I like the syringe. idea. I like the idea of just having like a couple points in like all of the logic skills. Oh yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. I like that too. That's a good idea. Because I, I like the idea that like you just spend a lot of time on the internet. So yeah, you and you're also lot, gonna you're read all uh, uh, the media articles, right? Yes. You're also gonna have to use uh, like their knowledge skills. That's a whole separate pool. Uh, so you're gonna have to pick out like the 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 knowledge specifically, <laughs> Wait, apart from like the logic things. Knowledge. Here's the thing, guys. I'll be real. <sighs> I just ignore knowledge. Yeah, like, the knowledge but that's, skills we are, are like we play it fast and loose with the improv, so you just know what you say, you know, or yeah. you don't. The knowledge skills oh. because you can sort of just invent them yourself. Okay. Um, you know, but I if mean, you're you playing can, more you mechanically, can, uh, you would be. You know. I see. So under logic, under individual skills, it says professional knowledge. But if you go back a page, professional knowledge includes journalism, business, law, military service, examples. So things like that. Yeah, is what I'm guessing. Yeah, yeah. Um, th that'd be one, and it can literally be. I think like you have knowledge of pop music as Pox, which yeah. has that has played mechanically <laughs> more than you'd think, honestly. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, into things. So well, your GM hopefully will take a take note of what you've put down as as knowledge. 
and be like, well, let me or, try to incorporate or, that in some way. Sometimes they don't. Yeah, we, sometimes they don't. Like all of the skills I gave Elvin Zenith Wine are like pistols knowledge, if he ever needs to like take apart a pistol and then uh, like matrix crime we, stuff. We haven't even it gotten into this, but this is like a huge part of character creation when most people play Shadowrun are the contacts. Oh, um, yeah, So yeah. you can spend, uh, I believe you can spend karma on the contacts and the people that you know. And these are people which I, I like this one because it very much uh, like leads into the role playing element where you're like, I know this guy who runs a junkyard and you have to pick a like a loyalty. Like that's how likely they are to not betray you. And a mm -hmm. um, how close your connection is, right? No, that's that's how close your connection is. The next one is like how well connected they are. So like in the or how the, connected oh, yeah, yeah. you are so to them. I think their that's connection loyalty. level, and then their connection level is called the connection, and then their loyalty to you is the other stat. So it's like their but access, that, and then their connection. To you. We don't really play with that because the character that I play in Neo Scum knows like a ton of people, Which and Ganon is, so is very forgiving for like uh, sort of in the moment being like, "Yeah, I know a guy here," and then. It's very funny to create an NPC and then force Ganon to play this NPC. But it's like a gift yes. for Ganon, yeah, you know? Like, he gets to, like, build off of that. Like, Big Marco, right? Like He's really Marco, good at yeah. that, too. L little Marco, sorry. So, Ryan, what are you thinking? So, I was thinking we could probably just... I mean, I think we don't have to define all of these knowledge skills. No, no, definitely not. Um, uh, some of them seem kind of interesting um, in order to flesh out our character a little bit. Which is kind of cool. Um, I, I was looking at the some of the intuition interests, like uh, things you're just interested in, like uh, current Simpsons movies, uh, yeah, twentieth century trivia. I don't you know, think the weird, Simpsons weird have been like good that. since the nineties. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, it's the first three. Do we have? I just want the skill nautical mechanic. Well, we can take that. That's fine. I mean, Let's do just you take want all the logic skills? How many are there? And then just put like two points into each of them. <laughs> one point, one point into plan. each of them. <laughs> wow, just, just the wisest, the most hot. logical. Okay. You're truly making the Ben Shapiro of uh, <laughs> run. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm thinking. Uh, do you want to take the engineering skill group then too for some of our skill points? Like, uh, just put Which one group? point into Intuition? engineering. And engineering, it gives us aeronautics mechanic, automotive mechanic, industrial mechanic, and nautical mechanic. What is something happened over there? Sorry. Guys, over here, Blair has just been adding magic abilities and then looking at me, and then <laughs> I'm looking at them, and we both are giggling. Uh, so Blair added a spell. Uh, it's a ritual called Destroy Coco Taxi. <laughs> Wait, I'm sorry, what? It's a destroy vehicle spell, and the type of vehicle is Coco oh, Taxi. Okay. So okay. You have to specify which one, which type of vehicle you are having this Blair also added an adept power, uh, melt, and you have to specify what you can melt, and Blair wrote in weapons, which makes sense for a pacifist. Oh, yeah, dude. Yeah. That's, That's pretty cool. cool. Although I was just briefly thinking yeah. about what if our character could just melt people's faces, like by putting <laughs> his hand on their face. And, but they get to go to heaven, so it's not fighting. There is there is something very funny in uh, like making somebody super pacifist and then giving them abilities that will like just straight up kill people. <laughs> yeah. Wow, Gandhi and civilization. Yeah. The Ark of the Covenant. So I think, Ryan, the problem with taking the engineering skill group is that it doesn't solve the problem of having 46 points to spend on skills. Well, it's more efficient, though, because, okay, I get your point. I know, but I don't care like, about efficient. I care about not having to pick out all these skills. <laughs> you picked 46 skills, and this is, why, <laughs> this, is, this is why you need to add the exotic weapon of uh, Bolas. You just get, and here's, here's the reasoning. You spend a lot of time on the internet. You're watching tutorials on, like, How weapon you YouTube. These, yeah. Okay, so I, I got it. So we okay. put, we put, okay. If we want to just dump skill points, but yes, like be, I do. but be super good mm -hmm. and specialized, but have like a little bit of knowledge everywhere else, we'll sure. do we'll do five in cracking, five in uh -huh. electronics, right? Okay. So that'll give us uh, mm -hmm. five points for six different skills. Now our group Perfect. skills are done. Okay, and now we're really good okay. at cracking mm -hmm. and electronics. Let's can can we max out more than one skill, right? 
Yeah, yeah. You can max out as many skills as you want, but six All is right. the max. So we we start with 46 skill points. Let's just take six of those and max out all of those six skills. Yeah. So now we have six in all of the ele- cracking and electronic skills. Now we have 40 points left over. Now it seems like <laughs> a lot. <laughs> and oh, yeah. it is. Um, do we have anybody that uh, is uh, saint good at like leadership and stuff like that? Yeah, he, yes, yes, but he also has a loss of confidence in his leadership ability. Now oh. that's drama. Uh, <laughs> we, yeah, we we hiked up his leadership and gave him certain adept abilities that let him speak with gravitas. Uh, but you know, he, there's some he doesn't. He feels a little guilty about how naturally it comes to him, and he doesn't feel like he's deserve deserving of people's uh, respect. Also, that makes I, sense. I just want to say every time I let Mike start clicking on stuff, uh, our karma goes above the legal limit for creating a character. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I added pain relief as a skill. You can ease the suffering of other people. Oh, yeah, you have to have that. Yeah. But that, makes t- that makes total sense. <laughs> That's amazing. Got to get rid of uh, of sustenance, though. <laughs> yeah. All right. He needs hamburgers now. So we're going to be good at uh, mechanics for nautical machines, right? Sure. Because uh, that was that seemed important to you, Amelia, and I want that. I just like the idea of being a nautical mechanic when we already have somebody that can walk on water. Like it's so useless. Uh huh. Well, I can't go. We we can't go like as fast as a boat on water. Yeah, we can <laughs> yeah. walk. We can't even run. Or like, what if you like lose confidence while you're walking on that water, and then we have to go out and find you? Yeah, please take the skill in riding jet skis. <laughs> yes. So let's put six points into biotechnology. Okay. Okay. So we're up to seven. Ryan, you take this so seriously. Oh my god. Okay. Uh, first aid. That'll be that'll be important, right? Sure. Uh, six points. Ooh, forgery. Ooh, that sounds fun. Yeah. Because we're we're not we're not perfect people. Six points. Um. Yeah. I think throwing weapons too sounds good. Ooh, throwing weapons does sound good. Wait, six points. Six points into throwing weapons. Yeah, it's under agility. Okay. All right. So hold on, hold on. We got a little teacup update here. We got a teacup update. uh, Teacup update. Teacup update. Um. (laughs) So go back to the active skills. Uh. So. Oh shoot! Shoot, dude. It's fine. Go back. Okay, we're going to we're going to active skills. So so we gave teacup the ability of flight. Just two points. Two. So teacup can just kind of hover. Teacup has little tiny wings. And it's yeah, and and like ho- even hovering, I feel like it's more of like a like t- teacup would have to try real hard. Teacup could jump off of something and sort and of like, um float down to the ground. Y- yeah, just like flapping really fast, like mm-hmm. a like a hummingbird's wings. Um, and then uh, so we're going into knowledge skills. Uh, and, and we did invent all of these knowledge skills, and we've given so let's pretty go much with five th- these points. Four. <laughs> okay, we've got First. dances. Uh, we've got uh, uh, songs. We've got poems. We've got smells. And we've got the War, War of, of 1812. 1812. <laughs> oh, I love it. <laughs> <And> Washington burned. <laughs> so, knows so, yeah, so much about the War of 1812. Five points in dances, poems, smells, and songs. And uh, four points in the War of 1812. Should it come up? You know? <laughs> Should it come up? I mean, uh, Teacup can't talk about it, but Teacup knows. If you were talk like, Teacup would be nodding with... With understanding of somebody, yeah, like if somebody were talking about the War of 1812, which, by the way, at this point, you got to think about the canon. That was so long ago. I mean, so long ago. You think of the War of 1812 now? Almost a a century, not a century, a uh, Uh, millennia ago. A, no. What's a thousand years? No. Wait, the War of 1812? It was like 200 years ago. Oh, no, that'd be 2800. <laughs> that's like a quarter of a uh, that, That'd be like the, the literally like the, the war of some medieval king. <laughs> like the Dark Ages. I was thinking we were in 2800, uh, right. not 2700. Yes. yes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, update, I gave... Uh, I gave Saint uh, the magic spell Ghoulish Strength. Ghoulish oh, wow. Strength. So Ooh. limbs fall off when you lift? Ooh, I, don't know. I have no idea. Guys, I'm- <laughs> I didn't, I didn't read the description cool. on the spell. We, but we, oh man, we needed to pick like 10 spells out. It was Guys, insane. Listen, the title is everything. Let me just say here if you're building your own game, 
understand that people are one thing thousand percent judging a book by its cover when you lay out a billion skills and you lay out like a billion spells and stuff 100 i know when like in hero lab i look at that big list and i'm just like looking for something that like rings you know something that yeah. kind of like sings to me and then you read the description and you're like oh actually that oh, yeah. sucks you go by the but, name like, you go by like the the title and then you're like ooh. How intriguing. What is this? I think a fun challenge would be, and this is like, uh, I, I spent some like evenings doing this, looking through the list of like all the different things you can customize, picking like one item or one like bioengineered aspect and starting there with your character. Like I just looked at uh, Gilly suit and I'm just like imagining oh, a shadow yeah. runner who's just like has a lucky Gilly suit that they're always wearing and they're like really good at like, like even any, in urban environments. Yeah. Any of these yeah. things are like such good inspiration and like, they're so specific. So you really can just be like, gave, oh, wow, my ghillie suit is shaped like a trash can. And <laughs> what you can do is you can also <laughs> like, you can also <laughs> modify your ghillie suit with like, a trash can. you like, can modify your ghillie suit or trash can with like en- enhancements or like enchantments. And like it can have my its own enchanted AI inside of trash it. can, and like the, the the limit to the customization, like we will be here for a fortnight making our characters uh, just like so freaking unique, and like all their items unique. Like the Coco Taxi, I haven't really started like augmenting the Coco Taxi, but, but it's on the list. We for can sure. we can give the Coco Taxi a nitrous button. We can give it a turret. On did the you top. spend money on the Coco Taxi? No, the Holy Spirit did. Well, no, but it Which came out the Holy wow. Spirit. Well, no, also the have... Holy Spirit got money too. <laughs> no, no, we uh, we were paid, we paid for it. I looked at it. I was like, it, it just traded some of its guns. Yeah, I gave a Saint a smart wig. We, we... <laughs> Didn't pass that one by me. Yeah. What does that entail? It's I'm just sorry. like a wig that I think you can like program it to change the way it looks. Oh wow, dude, wow, that's, that's pretty cool. cool. Give yeah, me good one. for like yeah costumes and I love it. All right, Amelia, I'm thinking unarmed combat. Yes, six pilot watercraft six. Uh huh. Because we can we can fix them, so might as well. Okay. And academic knowledge for our last three points: one in philosophy, one in history, and and one in music. Okay. How does that sound? Oh, perfect. I love it. Awesome. I want the most useless college degree I can get. <laughs> Philosophy, history, and music. So at least we're well-rounded. Perfect. Can you can yeah. you get some points yeah. in like uh like theater, acting, directing, maybe some like light design? Yeah. If you're really trying to make that trying to make that degree really useless, just <laughs> <laughs> I know I, I say this is somebody who has that degree. <laughs> <laughs> I think like Greek classics, maybe. Uh huh. Yeah. Specialized in Greek tragedies. All right. So I've got an entire page filled up with uh, skill points. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay. Congrats. Yes. You did it. Uh, you did it. So now we got qualities, right? Yes. I want to like qualities are fun. make the weirdest thing out of these. Yes. I think. Yeah. Qualities They're- are really where like the, the, I feel like the, the the character comes out. Yeah, the character comes out in the qualities, and you discover things about the character through the potential of the qualities. Oh I goodness. think that like we we're too normal, you know. Yeah. Am I stressing you out, Ryan? Is having to build a character with me? It, <laughs> it's stressful. so it's so different. You should make them <laughs> make them uh, ambidextrous, but they have constantly shaking hands. Oh, you know? oh like they I can made use- that. But yeah, well, Fred. Well, Fred I don't know had if concept. I was yeah, an extra. Though. Maybe though, we never. Uh, Neil Scum Guide and uh, support us on Patreon and listen to all sorts of fun characters. We that's honestly, I mean, like our our show is obviously narrative following the same characters, but Guiden is where we we create new characters uh, every few ups. Although th- this new arc, we've been the same characters for a while, but that's because they're great. Yeah, it, it honestly, I think. Personally, I really like making new characters. So mm-hmm. getting to do the the like guiding episodes, we've really gotten to like kind of mess around and like make a bunch of different kind of mechanics and explore some like stuff that we are not quite as able to get into with the main podcast storyline. Mm-hmm. Can we have um where did it go? Combat paralysis. <laughs> oh yeah. Are oh, you looking at disadvantages now? Should we start with the disadvantages? Oh, yeah. Uh, you can really start wherever. I think it's, it's probably match. best to start with the disadvantages because that will tell you how much like positive karma you have to spend on positive qualities. Okay. So it looks like you start with 25 karma 
off the bat. Yep. Um, now, what's the maximum additional karma you can get? From I think you your can only have qualities? you can only have up to you can only get twenty five from negative qualities. Yeah. Oh wow. Yeah. So you can have a total of fifty, and you can only buy twenty five quali- twenty five karma worth of positive quality. Yeah. So you'd have yeah. to spend the rest of the karma you gained on uh, on other stuff. Yeah, I do like or the thought of uh, combat paralysis, Amelia. That sounds pretty interesting. Is is that yeah real world combat or? I think we're like we're both. the only people that have like any. I I don't know. I mean, I think that like we're the only people that have like any combat ability at all, and I love the idea that like we're just also real bad at it. <laughs> yeah, it looks. It sounds like it's it's very real world combat, not like Matrix combat sort of stuff. Yes, Eleni. Yeah. What was that? Were you slandering the That's Holy fine. Spirit? I like no, that then. I was saying that the Holy Spirit had combat ability. Yeah. Combat. Thank you. Thank combat you, Casey. Paralysis. Can we also just have bad luck? What does that one do? This is I mean, bad the luck. The adversary. Right? Whoa, that's kind of scary. What, ba- what if the devil got to Jesus yeah. first? Uh, let's see here. When you use an edge, on a result of one, the point of edge is spent, but it has Goddess. the op- opposite effect. Oh, wow. Yeah, let's do it. Yeah. Combat paralysis and bad luck. Mm-hmm. So we just need one more point or more in order to max out our potential. Um, okay, one point or more. Yeah, because right now we're at twenty four extra karma, and you can only get twenty five total. I would like an allergy. Total. I would like an <laughs> allergy. Oh, oh yeah. yeah, there you go. Uh, two teacup pigs. Ooh, <gasps> no. brutal. Of course, teacup pig always <laughs> dejected. Oh, this is why people stop being your friend. Oh. So sad. But, like, you have such high charisma. Like, just so adorable anyway. Like a person who, like, has a a cat allergy, but they're just like, I I just take my meds and I live with it, you know? And Yes, exactly. Even though their eyes are always red. Red from allergies and also red from sweet tears of joy at their their lovely cat. Yes. Or in this case, their lovely teacup pig. I've heard teacup pigs make lovely pets. Yeah, dude. Or maybe just regular. So I think we can take that for like five karma. Don't you think? I'm trying to find it. One second. Uh, Well, they're in alphabetical order. I went too far. Sorry. It's on page 78. There we go. Allergy. So I think if we take it for five, so it's uncommon and mild. Uncommon. Yeah. Two and mild. Three. Okay. Yeah. So we just got like maybe like a little sniffly. Yes. Like slight itchy eyes if we get a little too close. Yeah. Yeah. Like don't touch. Well, do touch, but then, you know, sniff. Wash your hands. Allergic to teacup pigs. Yep. My goodness, that's totally specific. <laughs> <laughs> I wonder yeah. I wonder how you found out, except for hanging out with <laughs> Pixie. I think that's, that's probably, probably what happened. Teacup is, is our name. Like... Oh. <laughs> we are a pixie. You are a pixie. I thought your name was Pixie and you uh, were a teacup pig. No, no just, we, we had to a pick a metatype. Pig, but our metatype is technically pixie, but we're actually a, just a little pig. But all, we have wings. You're all we part have of wings, the so Lord's flock. We are a pixie. Yeah, we're, we're a pig with wings. A very mobile little pig. A pretty mobile little pig. Uh, so where are we in the process? How are we? We're lost. <laughs> Saint is done. Oh, wow. Uh, so t- so we're, we're, done. we're still purchasing qualities right now. Cool. Um, so Brian is slow. Yeah, because I'm slow. Well, <laughs> also, we've done it uh, quite a few times, and so we're a little mm-hmm. more familiar with all the the options. And Yeah, for us, yeah. this is just like ravenously clicking through menus and, like, and like, ah. reading things and making each other laugh. <laughs> yeah, we're, I, yeah, also, we put like five point, points in the War of 1812. We're, we're just, sometimes you just, you gotta make when choices. you're making characters like me, <laughs> yeah, you're just like, oh, f- <laughs> like dances, poems, smells, songs, War of 1812. Let's. Oh, I, oh, uh, you know, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you can cut that. that. You can cut, cut that. To the end of the whole sentence. <laughs> All right. I think focused concentration. Focused concentration. Okay. Uh, I like mm-hmm. I like Code Slinger as yeah, well. Yeah, Code Slinger is a good yeah. one if you're a decker because uh, it essentially pumps up one specific matrix action. And if you see yourself taking it a lot, then that's like a good one to do it for. Now, mm-hmm. does your character have a ton of money? Uh, two hundred and fifty, yeah, that's, that's quite maybe. a lot of money. So y- the next thing that you'll be able to do will be to like buy augmentations if you want. Yes, them. Mm-hmm. And that's you're not true. magic, so that would probably be a good yeah. idea. So focus concentration. What does that do? Probably well, what it for like. technomancer and magic users. 
has the discipline to manipulate manner or residence more precisely oh. than otherwise possible. Yeah, some of them won't apply so, to your so particular one, character. Yeah, so it wouldn't apply to us at all. But uh, Code Slainer would. Yes, mm-hmm. definitely. Well, that's dumb. I just liked what it was called. I know, it does sound cool. You can use that in another part of your... Yeah, uh, but you need more than that. Your character. Yeah. Do you want to be double-jointed for fun? I, I think... I like the uh, the positive quality erased, which is just that you don't have any, like, record of your existence in, like, uh, any, like, database. Which in, like, this world where everything is, like, tracked. Well, I think that makes sense, too. That might be an expansion or some other Oh, book. yeah. Because we're, we're going off of the the player's handbook. So, oh, I guess yeah. we'll take it. We do I have a lot of... Are- uh, a lot of expansions on our on our end. I would imagine so. We have the, the teacup pig expansion Photographic pack. memory might be cool. Oh, that's cool. An encyclopedia, a real encyclopedia yeah. brown move. That's uh, that's six points right there. Yes, yeah, so we can memorize all those Wikipedia articles we read. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so we're up to 16 out of uh, 50. And you don't also, you don't have to spend all of your stuff on qualities. Obviously, you can. Right. Sp- spend up to 25, but you can and also spend karma on it, it's like a way of like cashing in extra points in any other area. And too. you can also spend it at any well, it's not it's cheaper at to any spend time. Creation. Oh, it's cheaper to yeah. do it during creation. Never mind then. Yeah. You might as well do it. What about will to live? What does that one do? Uh, I don't know. I just picked them out Each based on what, what they're called. In will to live, you gain one additional damage overflow box. You could, uh, you could be really wild and just hop right to uh, mechanical implants, Ooh. augmentations, cyberware. I'm just gonna look at some of these now. Let's give let's give Saint a. Uh, He's a magic user. Yeah. We don't have nearly enough jaw. money to buy any of that. <laughs> Whoa! You're able to bite through bottles, knife blades, and even metal pipes with relative ease with ease with your junkyard jaw. Oh, it's a famous intimidation <laughs> tool, dude! I want to give this to Dak. Yeah. Ooh. This is what uh, KJ has though. Oh, yeah. Wow. Never mind. It's KJ's thing. In so, uh, Will to Live seems pretty decent. You want just yeah. one, so one how many level more, of that? How many more points do we have to spend? Um, A few. Well, I was thinking about <laughs> getting uh, Natural Hardening, which is 10 karma. Okay. I liked that one. Mm-hmm. Uh, will to Live, that we'll, we'll put in three to in that for now. Mm-hmm. I mean, we can have leftover karma, too. Right. We don't have to spend it all. I'm just looking at all the cool stuff that we can use. Um, I mean, we've got bad luck, so lucky doesn't make sense to take. I think that's most of the... Um, that's, like, all that looked interesting to me, I feel like. Yeah. I mean, I think at this point I'd rather spend it on, like, I don't know, other stuff, mm-hmm. contacts or something. I just want to say that I'm looking th- through this with Blair, and a positive quality is my country, right or wrong. And it's like, this is a positive a positive quality that's essentially that like your character is like a nationalist when this is I don't think that's a positive sometimes this game is bad yeah Yeah. (laughs) well there is a there is a disadvantage to this ability too yeah some of these positive qualities do have disadvantages and this one doesn't cost a ton of karma so that kind of makes sense disadvantage you're a big uh, jerk oh my god (laughs) sorry I stopped myself from cursing like four times in one in one breath we've been recording for three hours I'm I'm breaking (laughs) yeah Ryan I want to finish up because I cannot sit here for much longer okay I apologize (laughs) god bless you but (laughs) no let's finish this up okay so we've got a bunch of negative and positive attributes or or qualities uh we've got our attributes we've got our skills um so now we can spend what karma and money on other things really it's just money i think uh for like your if you wanted to do any cyberware or um any augmentations and then you can buy weapons or vehicles, gear, guns. Um, the, the way you spend karma is by putting it into anything you want, essentially. So you can either like use it to buy additional attributes. You can use it to buy additional skills. Um, that's sort of like what your addition, your like that remaining twenty five karma is used for. Right, okay. but you wouldn't you wouldn't spend karma on augmentations, <laughs> weapons, gear. You could. You could. You can exchange uh, karma for money in oh, the right. cur- creation phase. So we have 11 karma remaining. Yeah. So I think we can spend that on contacts too, though. Yeah. Yes. 
Um, but you also get like a certain number of contacts to begin with too. Right. But so yeah, your your next step would just be to like outfit your character with guns and weapons and armor. And also all of your augmentations in Matrix gear too. Okay, so we have um, skills in throwing weapons. So what kind of cool throwing weapons can we So have? throwing weapons uh, covers what grenades kind? too. Yeah. You could also do kunai from I the- I think I would uh, love some grenades. Uh, Naruto uh, franchise or Bill Nye from the Bill Nye franchise. <laughs> Kunai the science blade. Coo, coo, coo. Spend your resources. Oh my goodness, there's so many things to do. Spend your leftover karma. Yeah, I mean, I feel like we can just... Um, oh my goodness, yeah. <laughs> I mean, at this point, I think that, like, is there anything special that you specifically want? We can talk about that, but otherwise, I'm not... Uh, no. Yeah, there's so, so much. Oh my goodness. Um... Basically, a really good cyber deck. Uh, I know that's a thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. So that's that's like one of your big big things you'll want to pick up as a decker. Yeah. And probably a contact. Um, Can it look like one of the dual things in Yu-Gi-Oh? Sure. Why not, right? I mean, that's important to me. <laughs> I mean, you because could Because I need to be able to say, modify. you activated my trap card. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I get it now. Uh, and then the other thing too, you can also buy like vehicles and stuff. Um, if you want your character to have a way of getting around, do we want to just spend seven karma? We probably need that jet ski. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. Dig deep. Do it. This is your best friend ever. Or your, your mom, put your mom in there. Yeah. Why not put your, <laughs> yes. put your mom in there. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what that means, but it says seven is the max. You can pick well, uh, right? the Holy Spirit. You yes. can be friends yes. with our Holy Spirit. Yeah. Bo- bound spirits? No, no. You're just good friends with the our bound spirit. Oh, okay. You can be like, hey, trying to trying to call the Holy Spirit. Do you mind summoning them real quick? I got a couple questions. You guys are we're good friends. Uh, I, I yeah. I love it. Yeah, that need, works. Need to borrow the Coco yes. taxi. There's so much to do. Yeah. Keisha, I'm just like saying yes to everything at this point. Yeah. I'm so tired, Ryan. <laughs> I'm <laughs> time to give you guys. <laughs> Yeah, there. Oh my goodness, I I really there are so many options to to pick from in here, and so much in this book. I'm on page four hundred and fifty, and I'm still not through the book. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, and is, yeah, yeah. That's why I said I think that you should just be like some things, and we will. Yeah. Okay. So we've got these three characters. How did they get together? Uh, why are they together? So w- first of all, we need a name for this character, Amelia. Oh, I wrote down Aura. Aura? I like it. Love it. Mm-hmm. I like it a lot. So got, is Teacup named Teacup? Are you proud of yeah. me? Teacup's name is Teacup T E E. Oh, that's so mm-hmm. cute. Teacup. And so, Piggy Piggy is the last name, which is P I G I. Teacup mm-hmm. Piggy? Yep. Oh. And we got we got Saint and Saint is an acronym <laughs> for Blair. Do you want to just uh uh Samuel? Adam. Oh gosh. Oh, are they all saints? Uh, that would be insane. Isaac. Ishmael. <laughs> Ishmael. I, Isaac, yeah. What's N? A has to be Abraham, though, right? Oh, uh, okay, yeah, Abraham, sure. And then N is... Uh, Nantucket. N- no, Naz- no, 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 no. Nazareth. 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 Nazareth, <laughs> Nazareth. <laughs> yeah. Is Tony. <laughs> yeah, Casey Tony's brother. Uh, yeah, so maybe... So we could all know each other um, from... Maybe we've done missions before together for the same. You ran into Piglet, Mister Johnson. Yeah, just now, five minutes ago. What What is kind of <laughs> nice about uh, Shadowrun is that the setting lends itself to just sort of like random smatterings of characters coming together. It's just like, oh, you all got assigned on this job because you work with the same like corp, or you know, you've like run with these people before. In in our in our Neo Scum universe, Ganon came up with an app called Dark Movers. Which is a like shadow running like task rabbit or Tinder where you can like swipe on jobs and it matches you with other shadow runners in your area to to be available for jobs and stuff. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, there's a cool vehicle just to like bring us all together quickly. I want to say we took a class together. Yes. What kind of okay? Class? A cooking class. Um, it was probably some type of class that would appeal to all of us. So. A, a computer, class. a computer class for no, not a computer class. It has I would to be not. Something we maybe that was the computers would be breaking. That would be oh, it. how about we all? Uh, we met in. What a, about a performance class? I like that. I was gonna say we met at like a bar crawl or something. 
because all of all of Saints uh, contacts, it's just three different bartenders. <laughs> <laughs> We don't have any contacts. We, yeah. <laughs> we, we didn't do that part. We, we, bur- we burnt all our bridges. We and, burnt uh, all our bridges. We don't know anybody. But we did go to the bar Apparently we just crawl. have our mom. Yeah. Is that what we have? Our mom? Is it, is it our mom? I think we just Aura's mom? I don't know. Yeah. Is it contact? I think Aura's mom. If, hey, if your mom's connected, yep. it's, it pays to know your mom. And I, know her in a sense that is like, I can call you and ask you information about Shadowrunning games. Uh, I want to say Chica Piggy is just like very, very much reminding me of Donkey from Shrek. And like the fact that you have no contacts. It's like Donkey was a pariah too. Yes. And Donkey, th- we're the, I guess in this scenario, we're Shrek and Aura is sort of like a hacker puss in boots maybe. Okay. Is, mm. is Aura... Like our mom's old handle when she was like master hacker in the previous generation. Oh, we Uh-oh. lost sound. Oh. We lost. But sound. yes, to answer your question, yes, yes. that sounds cool. Uh, so we effectively made uh, a really interesting group of people. Um, I think. Yeah. 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 I don't uh, think so. Certainly. Honestly, <laughs> I cannot wait for the fan art. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> it, we can't hear you again, <laughs> but I see you laughing. Yeah. <laughs> This group sounds so so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much for joining us for our Shadowrun character creation episodes. Um, Mike, do you want to remind people where they can find you? Uh, yeah, you can find me on twitter.com slash it's Migdal time. You can find me streaming with Eleni at twitch.tv slash it's Mike Lenny time. Uh, it's spelled just like our names combined. <laughs> um, or you can uh, find me in Chicago at uh, Jewel Osco <laughs> in the cheese aisle, stuffing my pants with those little baby bell wax <laughs> wheels. <laughs> oh I got God. four of them, and I'm making a tiny little race car. Oh, now you can find me at the t- street racing, illegal cheese street racing. <laughs> Sorry, we've just been recording for so long. I'm losing my mind. Next. Uh, you can find me on Twitter. Twitter at Blair underscore Brit. Uh, yeah, that, that's it. Yeah. For now. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and uh, th- th- this is Casey Tony here reporting live. Uh, you can find me uh, on twitter.com uh, at it's Migdal time, liking the tweets, and and, and at uh, all the other. I would go through the other handles, but we don't have time for this dumb bit. Um, yeah, uh, you can follow me at at Casey Pony. That's P O N E Y, uh, and also twitch.tv slash Casey Pony. Also with uh, an E, and and I'll be streaming literally all three mainline Kingdom Hearts, I imagine, over the next six years. Uh, <laughs> like for how long that will probably <laughs> take. So, <laughs> so literally, even if you, you <laughs> discovered the show long after it ended, I'll, I'll probably still be streaming. Yeah. Uh, so, yeah. And neilscrum.com. You can find me, Eleni Sovjo, uh, on Twitter or Instagram at Electric Eleni. My name is spelled E L E N I. Uh, or streaming with Mike, twitch.tv slash it's Mike Lenny time. That's it. Awesome. Everywhere else, I'm a ghost. <laughs> well, thank you, everybody, for listening. And please join us on the next episode for our discussion portion. Thank you. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye, friends. Cool. Character Creation Cast is a production of the One Shot Podcast Network and can be found online at www.charactercreationcast.com. Head to the website to get more information on our hosts and guests, or even some of our character sheets. Character Creation Cast can be found on Twitter at CreationCast. I'm one of your hosts, Ryan Bolter, and I can be found on Twitter at Lord Neptune. Our other host, Amelia Antrim, can be found on Twitter at Ginger Reckoning. Music for this episode is used with a Creative Commons license or with permission from the podcast they originated from. Further information can be found within the show notes. Our main theme music is Hero Remix by Steve Combs and is used with a Creative Commons license. This podcast is owned by us under Creative Commons. This episode was edited by Ryan Bolter. 
Further information for the game systems used in today's guests can also be found in the show notes. If you like the systems discussed and wish to purchase them, links to the products can be found in the show notes. Also, check the notes or the website for cool stuff to go with each character, such as dice or mixtapes. Thanks for joining us. And remember, we find that the best part of any role-playing game is character creation. So go out there and create some amazing people. We will see you next time. Some show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Show blurbs. Character Creation Cast is hosted by the One Shot Podcast Network. If you enjoyed our show, visit One Shot Podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Just keep keep going. <laughs> if you enjoyed our show, visit OneShotPodcast.com, where you'll find other great shows like Backstory. Backstory is a cozy, thoughtful interview show featuring the most fascinating folks in role-playing. Join host Alex Roberts as she gets to know game designers, LARP rights, scholars, community organizers, and more. From emerging artists to seasoned veterans, guests open up about their creative process, what keeps them engaged, and their visions for the future of role-playing.